John Robinson, now entering his seventh season, has been a Rams head coach longer than any other in franchise history. Last year's chief motivator guided the LA Rams to the playoffs for the fifth time in six years. But this year, the Rams are talking Super Bowl, and with their league leading 56 sacks in 88, it could be in their sights. You'd have thought the Atlanta Falcons had died last year. There were more sacks in the stands than on the field. Head coach Marion Campbell is faced with trying to revive the falling Falcons, but superb young quarterback Chris Miller, along with all-pro running back John Settle, and the changing uniforms rookie Deion Sanders could put an end to the Falcons' frustration. When you think of great Rams quarterbacks, Bob Waterfield, Norm Van Brocklin, and of course, Roman Gabriel, you can now add Jim Everett to the list as he's becoming the Rams' all-time best. CBS Sports presents the National Football League as this afternoon from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, the Los Angeles Rams take on the Atlanta Falcons. There will be plenty of ice around the ballpark and the stadium today. It will not, however, be of the natural variety as the fluids will be flowing freely. Game time temperature 90 degrees. The humidity listed at 56%. It feels higher than that. And of course, it can be very hot and humid here in Atlanta. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Zabriskie, and we welcome you to the season premiere of the NFL here on CBS. Opening games are always important for all teams, but perhaps a little more important for these two teams this season because it is a conference matchup for both Atlanta and Los Angeles. My partner today is Terry Bradshaw. And, Terry, what is it about an opener, and this one in particular, that makes it so important? Well, Steve, it's, it's kind of like a Broadway play. Uh, it's something new, exciting. Maybe it's like a coming back from being overseas for a while you've had dates before but you haven't had one in eight months you, you know what it's all about but it's new and exciting kind of gets stimulating and these two quarterbacks said opening games are the most high pressured games of the season with the exception of course of playoff games so it's just the idea they want to get off to a good start that's got them all excited well among the many factors today certainly the weather will be cheap and i think that with the heat and humidity today it's going to affect both teams but how will it have an effect do you think well, terry hey folks i went down on the field before this game started and it was so humid down there i wasn't there more than five minutes i was wringing wet with sweat i walked over to the coaches they were wringing wet with sweat I'll tell you what's going to happen today. The Falcons are going to have to be able to run this football. They have no depth whatsoever in their offensive line. Two starters are out. Bill Freilich, the starting right guard. Hey, he just got back, so they have no depth. If Miller, Chris Miller, the quarterback of the Falcons, has to throw the football, it's going to play into the hands of the number one pass defense and sack team in 1988, these Los Angeles Rams. Walked off the field, Marion Campbell said, hey, Jerry, we're going to need lots of intravenous fluids after this one's over with. Well, that may be true. They may also need a few while the game is in progress. It is extremely humid. There is very little wind, if any, down on the field. The Los Angeles Rams have won the toss, and they will be receiving the goal to our left. Ron Brown from inside the five and out across the 20. Jim Everett. The Los Angeles quarterback who has really come into his own leads the offense onto the field for the Rams. And here's the unit he'll be working with. Very big, very veteran offensive line with Panky Newberry, Smith, Slayton, and Slater. Damone Johnson starts at tight end. The Rams with a very balanced attack one reason why many people feel they may be a contender for the Super Bowl this year. On first down, Robert Del Pino out of the backfield for a short game, just short of the 25. Bobby Butler, the veteran defensive backup on the tackle for Atlanta. In the backfield with Everett, Greg Bell, Buford McGee. Now you'll see Pete Holohan at the H-back position once in a while. Henry Ellard and Willie Anderson, two great receivers. And on long yardage and third down situations, look for Aaron Cox, and, of course, the speedster Rod, Ron Brown to be in there as well. Second down and six following the gain of four. Bell's first carry. Tries to bounce outside, and he gets a yard or two as well as Andre Proust 
Number 93, who had such a sensational rookie year last year, dragged him down. Jim Everett, one of the things that he's going to do today is go up to the line of scrimmage and call a check with me. He will key the safety. Whichever safety comes up to the line of scrimmage, he will call his running plays away from that safety. That time, the weak safety, Gordon, came up, and then Everett called a play and ran Bell to the left, away from Gordon. Last year, Bell with 1,212 yards, five defensive backs, four wide receivers into the game for the Rams. As Cox and Brown are in there. Lots of time for Everett. But he overthrows everybody. It was intended for Aaron Cox. But Scott Case did a great job of holding him up. There is a penalty flag thrown, however. Dale Hamer is a brand new National Football League referee. Number 56, offense, the penalty is declined, fourth down. So the offender, veteran center Doug Smith, and here is Dion Prime Time Sanders as Dale Hatcher will put it away for Atlanta. And the fans here in Falcon Stadium are up. Sanders at the 20, drops the ball. Cheers turned to cheers on Dion Primetime Sanders' first chance. One of the, one of the, one of the problems Sanders is gonna have to face. This is not college. He just signed that 4.4 million dollar contract, and these fans gave him a big round of applause. But there you can see the pressure of the opening game affecting the number one draft choice of these Falcons, Dion Sanders, who's only been in camp, practice with this team one and a half days. Well, they're bringing it back. It was a 52-yard punt by Hatcher. Here's the call. An eligible receiver, downfield, number 57. The penalty is accepted. Replay. Well, that would have been a backup linebacker. 57 coming down that time. George Bethune for the Rams. You can't leave before. The, before only the two outside can, guys can go down before the punt. That time, uh, George Bethune got off the ball. Can't do that. Kick it over. Well, Deion Sanders will have another chance as they move the ball back inside the 25 of Los Angeles. I bet he doesn't fumble this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he fielded a couple of dozen punts in practice on Friday flawlessly. Hatcher doesn't get off nearly as good a kick. And Sanders at the 40. At midfield and bumped out of bounds there. Robert Del Pino bumped him out of bounds, a 40-yard punt by Hatcher, and the Falcons will have excellent field position. Chris Miller, who has been described as just plain winner by Marion Campbell, and here's the offensive unit he'll be working behind. They are, for the most part, young, and they are out of position in some respects, and Bill Fralick just reported to camp this week, so they don't have much depth there. Could be a big factor today. They have excellent field position at the Rams 48. John Summer. Inside the 45. Clifford Hicks on the tackle. John Settle, Gene Lang, Haynes, and Collins, who were teammates at Northern Arizona University. Collins, a very highly thought of rookie. And on third down and go along yardage, it'll be Stacy Bailey and Floyd Dixon in there as well at the wideout. It is second down and four. The ball at the Los Angeles 42 after the game of six. And he passed the seven. Settle on the carry. And he's wrapped up right away by Kevin Green in his fifth year out of Auburn. Now the Rams defensive line consists of only two people. For the most part, they run the Eagle with these two, Reed and Miller, and then Alvin Wright will come in at nose tackle when they go to a more conventional set. And then the five linebackers, Green Owens, Mester, Brown, and Wilcher. For the most part, veterans, active, and good. In the backfield, Gray Hicks, Newsom, and Stewart, with Newman and Henley in there as the extra DBs. And one of them is in there right now with a nickel package on third down. Settle again. Can't get away. He's wrapped up. Just as he crosses the line of scrimmage by Sean Miller. 
So it'll be fourth down and about six yards to go. Well, there's the running game we were talking about at the offset of this show. And uh, I got to believe Marion Campbell's thinking kind of like we are. If we can get this running game going, it's going to be to our plus. We live here in Atlanta. We practice in this. And we can wear the Rams front uh, three down. So consequently, we saw one pass and two runs. And the run's not effective. Scott Fulhag, in his third year out of Kansas State, will do the punting for Atlanta. Daryl Henley, number 20, and 28, Clifford Hicks, are back to receive for, for Los Angeles. Whoa. Very high kick. And well past the end line of the end zone. So the touchback on the 43-yard punt will bring it out to the 20 on the touchback, first and 10 for Atlanta. No score in the first quarter. And we'll be back to Atlanta in a minute. The uh, assistant head coach, offensive line coach of the Atlanta Falcons, Jim Hannafin, going over some stuff. There's Mike Ken starting left tackle, and you can see that's a pulling play. Evidently, the linebackers under line there, the linebackers knocked off the pulling guard on one of the plays. Counter draws that the Falcons ran, and they're just trying to get their blocking assignments corrected. The Los Angeles first and 10 after the touchback at their own 20. No score. Firing it for Henry Eller, but it is too tall. Scott Case had the coverage on the NFC's leading receiver last season. Up front for Atlanta, it's Mike Gann, Tony Casillas, great nose guard, and Rick Bryan in the standard 3 4 alignment with Bruce, Rady, Tuggle, and Williams, four pretty good linebackers. In the secondary, Butler, Case, Gordon, and Cooper, for the most part veterans, and Demery and Moore will be the nickel and dime back. Keep your eyes today. We, well, we'll keep our eyes on Tuggle, right inside linebacker for the Falcons, a real hitter. Second down and 10, still at the Los Angeles 20. Greg Bell. Not much running room. Two or three is all wrapped up by Rick Bryan and Tim Gordon, the free safety. That play was responsible. The reason that play was turned back inside was because Andre Bruce, 93, the outside linebacker, he went outside and turned in the guard, turned the force to run back to the inside, which is what he wanted to do. If he didn't take on the blocker, force the running back back inside, he'll force him back into the coverage of the pursuit, and that's exactly what happened that time. Bruce comes out as the extra DP goes in, and extra wide receiver as well for Los Angeles on third down and seventh. Overthrown, Flipper Anderson, incomplete. Bobby Butler with the coverage, and it has not been a strong start for Jim Everett. He's one of four. That ball slipped out of Jim Everett's hand. It came out wobbling like a wounded duck. And once again, I want to bring up the day that is extremely humid here in this in the Atlanta Fulton County State. It's very humid, and your hands perspire. And I got to believe sweat got on Everett's hands, forcing that ball to slip. Deion Sanders gets another shot as Dale Hatcher will punt it away. High short kick. Sanders is going to let it drop, and it takes a Los Angeles roll inside the 20. And it rolls out of bounds at the 17. James Washington down to cover it for the Rams. Still no score in the first quarter. There is a penalty flag down back near the line of scrimmage after a 60-yard punt by Hatcher. And rookie referee Dale Hamer says it is against Los Angeles. So you got to believe Atlanta's going to accept that one. They're going to accept it. One of the things that Deion Sanders will have to learn is inside the 10, you turn loose to the fouls. football and on the play. Illegal substitution number 26 is refused. We have an ineligible receiver downfield. Number 50 is accepted. Five yard penalty. Repeat down. So we had two penalties on the play, and the one that's accepted is the ineligible receiver downfield. Right, it backs him up five, forces the Rams to kick again, but Deion Sanders should have run up, fair catch, and caught the ball another 15 yards. He should not have allowed that ball to bounce. If the ball is going to go past the 10-yard line, then you wave it off, get out of the way, and let it roll. Los Angeles penalties have wiped out punts by Hatcher of 52 and 60 yards. So now he'll have to do it. And he'll kick it away just outside his five. This is a beauty. And Sanders retreats back to the 32. Drops the ball again. Prime time, Sanders. 
shows how he got his nickname as he goes all the way for a touchdown. Garland Thaxton with a great block to spring him on a 68-yard punt return to put Atlanta out in front. Deion Sanders told us yesterday that for every touchdown he gets on a punt return, he will give the blocking people three choices, a Gucci watch, a bunch of money, or a gold chain. Right now, he just forked up about five grand of that bonus money he got yesterday. <laughs> you know what? He can afford it. He can afford it, and that's excitement, and that's prime time, and that's why he was their number one draft choice. Paul McFadden on to attempt the extra point. Out of Miller's hold, and it is seven to nothing Atlanta. Let's take another look at Deion Sanders paying benefits already in his first game after signing that huge contract. Now Paul McFadden kicks it off with Atlanta leading seven to nothing. Ron Brown inside the five. Ron Brown and Sanders can run together all day long. Dion, well, Bo knows baseball. Dion knows baseball. Dion Sanders leaving the Yankees to come to the Atlanta Falcons and sign the contract. This was his first major Never league home run. Sanders. And it got out of there in one quick hurry. And the fans got a little example of what Deion Sanders is all about and why he's considered to be perhaps a hot dog at time. Watch him tie his shoe on home plate yeah. after the home. Good place to do it. He is something else. And, uh, whether it's Los Angeles in business first and 10 at their own 21. They have been unable to get their offense on track yet. Trailing 7 to nothing. Ever to throw again. Ellers. Bumped out of bounds by Bobby Butler. And he is close to a first down. One of the things we're going to watch is the, the, the cornerbacks for the Falcons like to play off 10 yards and then read the receiver by dropping back. They don't play tight. And what happens is the Everett will see this, and he'll throw these little five- and eight-yard sideline patterns all day long until he, until he gets Case and Butler to come up and press his wideouts. Then and only then will he then allow himself to start going deep with those guys. It's a gain of 11 for a first down, just outside of the 30 of Los Angeles. Greg Bell trying to cut back, nowhere to go. Jesse Tuggle, 58, leading the charge as Atlanta stayed at home along the front. Great block by Damone Johnson, 86, tight end of the Falcons. He actually hooked the defensive end for the for the I'm talking about for the Rams Johnson that is hooks the defensive end but Bell didn't follow pursuit he went back inside and when the end was sitting right there waiting on him if you hook the end you go outside if you knock the end out wide then you cut inside gain of just a yard second down and now complete the Holohan the tight end Tim Gordon, the free safety, hit him immediately, but Pete Holohan with a big reception in his ninth year out of Notre Dame, and in not only a Los Angeles first down, but they're in Atlanta territory. Uh, one of the things that happened was Holohan got released, clean release. As a linebacker, what you do on a receiver like Holohan, 81, is you pop him, get your hands on him, and slow him down. Holohan got off the line of scrimmage. No one even touched him, didn't even stop him, and he's by that linebacker just like that, and Everett with that great arm just, boom, just popped it right in there. It's a gain of 19 in the first down at the Atlanta 48. Going long. Intended for Flipper Anderson, but he was double covered. Evan Cooper, the strong safety, and Charles Demery, who's in there as the fifth DB, had him pretty well. All right, notice on the left side now when Flipper Anderson comes out. And look at the separation, the corner on the outside. Look what Butler's doing. Butler's dropping to the outside. There's the hook and go. No one paid any attention to it. You know why? Because they hadn't run the 10-yard hook. First of all, run the 10-yard hook and complete it. Now you get Butler's attention. When he sees that little move, he'll break off and come inside. But they had not set up the bump and go. They had not run the hook. And what's a defensive back going to do first? He's going to not get beat deep. Exactly. So it's second down. Ten. Bell with a big hole. And a first down, but he fumbles the football. 
They're going to say he's sound. They're going to rule that the ground caused the fumble. The line judge, Ron Bloom, running right in there immediately to signal that Bell was down. Bell right in the center of your screen notice that just the lead block by Buford McGee separates gets the gap inside for Bell now now he goes down and that looks to me like before his elbow hit the ground that the 99 green knocked the ball out of his hand let's see once again and they may be reviewing that the like, play yeah that looked like a fumble it looks like it was a 99 green it was Andre Bruce the linebacker looks like he comes across and swings that hand in there and knocks the ball out, Steve, before Bell hits the ground. Jack Petty, the replay official, and they're looking at it one more time. Okay, there's Bell inside. Now, he's not down. Now, here comes the hit, and there's your fumble. Folks, that's a fumble. The ball was knocked out by Bruce. It should be Atlanta's ball. Another angle. The play stands. First down. I don't know why they have instant replay and why they even bother viewing it when they don't ever change their calls. Don't make sense to me. Well, they were looking at probably the same thing we were all looking at, and they ruled that it was not a fumble. So it's first and 10 Los Angeles at the Atlanta 36. Bell again. Down to the 20 to the 21, perhaps. Joel Williams on the tackle for Atlanta, and Bell picks up 15. Something that the Rams, Steve, didn't do a lot of until last year was pull their guards right side. This time, you're going to see the guards slanting in the tackle. Slater leading outside for Bell. There's a great Buford McGee block, a kickout block, and now Bell's free. Bell only played in the first quarter last week. His first game, he had a contract problem. He came in not real happy with management. And if they continue to run him today, they've got a great one on the bench named Gaston Green who will spell him. Bell's carried five times for 35 yards. On a reverse, Ron Brown. Great speed. Wrapped up inside the 10 by John Rady. But it's going to be first and goal Los Angeles at about the 8. These plays are called by Ernie Zampezi up in the press box, formerly of the San Diego Charge. Great offensive mind. And what his thinking was, it was inside the uh, scoring territory of the Falcons. The Falcons are known to blitz and become extremely aggressive. And one way to slow that down is to show flow one way and reverse it the other. And that is a reverse. It's a handoff to Brown, comes back around, does a fine job of running. And there's Ernie Zampezi, who for so many years orchestrated the big yardage San Diego offense before moving up the coast to Los Angeles. Everett in the end zone, but nobody's there. Buford McGee saying he was held up, and he was by Robert Moore, the safety. But he doesn't get a call. There are some scores now, games underway around the country, as we'll continually bring you up to date. Kofer with a field goal for San Francisco. In the Battle of the Bays, it's going to be second down and goal, still at the eight for the Rams. Ryan Campbell, who himself sends in the defensive signal. Well, he's, he's known as one of the really fine defensive coaches ever coached in the National Football League, so he's a, his own defensive coordinator. Buford McGee. Maybe to the six is all. John Rady and Tony Casillas pushed him back. You know, one of the problems, one of the, when you get into ball calling plays, one of the things you must think about, let's think like this. If you're real aggressive with your defensive line, then you run draws because you go right by their aggressiveness. But it's so hot today, and the Falcons have been on the field now for a little bit on this drive, so now they're just sitting there playing their guys in front of them. They're not really rushing the passer. They're just playing off of them, reading in the backfield. So therefore, draws are not good plays. They don't work. It was a gain of two to the six-yard line, where it'll be third and goal. For Ellard, but overthrown. Jim Everett and the Rams are not off to a strong start. It was a lengthy drive, but now they'll have to go for the three points on fourth and goal from the six, trailing seven to nothing. And Mike Lansford is in to attempt the field goal. Pete Holohan will do the holding. And about 
the 14. So it'll be about a 24 yard attempt. And it is good. Four minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Atlanta Falcons leading the Los Angeles Rams 7 to 3. The Falcons with a 7 to 3 lead. They did it on a Deion Sanders 68 yard punt return and a long Los Angeles drive has resulted in a field goal. So Lansford will kick off. 89 George Thomas and 20 Evan Cooper back to receive it. It is George Thomas two yards deep. And a flag goes down at the point of the tackle at the 18. Frank Stams. Or Messner was. Mark Messner down there to make the hit. There's the Swamp Fox. His 28th year in the National Football League. His second stint with Atlanta. Ninth overall as a head coach in the NFL. Illegal block above the waist. Number 26, correction 37, correction 37, first down. Albert Shelley, backup safety. So moves the ball back inside the 10 to the 9. No guy we haven't heard from yet is our Sean Collins, number one uh, draft choice of the Falcons, 85. He's a wide receiver, big, tall kid. Uh, they really like him. Falcons have hardly had any time on offense at all. But they lead 7 to 3 as Chris Miller brings them up first and 10. Gene Lang in motion. Miller has it knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. And there's a penalty flag thrown at the line of scrimmage as well. Well, notice there's no one over the center. 93 read out to the left and to the right, 99. I mean, 98, that would be Sean Miller. Those are the two tackles. So there's no one over the center that time. No odd man front. That's not the Eagle. The penalty against Los Angeles. Five yards moves it out to the 14. So it'll be first and five. Gene Lang slicing for the first down. Out to the 20. Clifford Hicks tripped him up along with Mark Messner. Well, a lot is said about the offense of the Los Angeles Rams, but there are a lot of looks that these Falcons will give you, and that time. The Falcons came up with two tight ends, got in the eye set, and gave the ball to Lang, who slashed through, and almost, well, he did. He got the first down, so we'll see a lot of looks, too, from these Falcons. That is the first first down from Atlanta. They have gained a total of 10 yards so far, but they lead 7 to 3. First and 10, right at the 20. 3.46 to go in the first quarter. Now Miller calls timeout. One of the things that Los Angeles' defense can do is confuse you a little bit. And they bring an extra guy into the defensive line, it appeared, and Miller didn't quite know what to do. Well, the third man they're looking at is 99. That's Alvin Reed. He's a natural nose tackle. There are three tackles in there. That's why Miller called timeout. Defensive coordinator Fritz Shermer, who has been the architect of this Eagle approach, which the Rams are not in at the moment, as you see Big Alvin Wright right up over the center. In the Eagle, there would only be two down defensive line. First and ten. Atlanta, they're on 20. Miller under pressure gets it away, but incomplete. Intended for Settle. Mike Wilcher 
coming from that outside linebacker position to put the pressure on. Yeah. In a 3-4, now that the Rams have three big linemen in there, in a 3-4, a, a quarterback comes out and looks at the strong safety and determines which side the rotation is because the side the, the rotation is means the linebacker, in this case, 54 Wiltshire, he will be coming from the opposite side. And so this time Miller saw it turn around, but the back settled coming out, didn't have his head around to help out young Miller. Second down and 10. Settle can't find a hole right at the line of scrimmage. He is hammered with nothing but blue shirts. So it'll be third down and 10. And Atlanta, Terry, still unable to run the football, which you felt was a key to do. I really thought they had to. Well, they still have to run the football. One of the things that's really bad for them right now is the fact that they're always in third and long, more than five yards. We're looking at third and nine here. And when you do that against a great defense like the Rams, all you're doing is playing into their hands. They've got to get a running game going or a short passing game to take pressure off the quarterback Miller. Rams with six defensive backs in on third and nine. Miller has time. Incomplete. It was intended for Floyd Dixon, and it was a catchable ball. Wiltshire had the coverage. That was a mismatch, but he couldn't hold on. Couldn't hold on, and Wiltshire almost got his hands on it and took Floyd Dixon's eyes off of the ball. He didn't touch the ball. He just made him take his eyes off of it. The ball hit Dixon right in the chest. So Scott Fulhag will come in, and dropping back is Daryl Henley, number 20, a rookie, standing at about his own 35. Gets it away. Henley takes it at the 38. And runs out of bounds in Atlanta territory near the 45. So the Rams, who had a good drive and ended up with three points after the 40-yard punt, will enjoy good field position as Atlanta leads it 7-3 to three with 241 remaining in the first quarter. Everett's had a great preseason. First game, and we said a lot of nerves, want to get off to a great start. Should have been all pro last year, led the league in with 31 touchdown passes, and yet did not get in the Pro Bowl because of Wade Wilson up a minute up with the Vikings. But this guy should have been there and has not had a good first quarter. A little nervous, but I expect him to settle down and, and start completing passes. First and ten, Los Angeles at the Atlanta 46. For Ellard, complete. And Ellard short of a first down, and he took some kind of hit from Andre Bruce. After Bobby Butler had the initial check. Yeah, see, with with this coverage that the Falcons use, I know a strong arm guy like, like like Everett wants to throw a deep, but I turn around, I throw to Ellard, I said, here, five yards, who's take it? Okay, going five more, here, take it, five more, here, take it. Until I got those corners on top of me, then I go, boom, downtown with it. I just take what they're giving me and stay in there and keep patient. Don't get too excited and try to take it deep. Second down and one. Both Bell and McGee in the backfield. Pitch to Bell. First down and then some inside the 30. Down to about the 28. John Rady, 59 on the tackle. Terry, you talked about how Jim Everett should have been in the Pro Bowl last year. What a year he had. Yeah, he was the number one. TD passer in the National Football League. Can you imagine and didn't make the Pro Bowl? Give me a break. I mean, On the other hand, he had one of the best receivers, in fact, the leading receiver among yardage last year, Henry Eller. Not they, bad. They've become, I mean, people talk about Montana and Rice. They've got nothing on Everett and Eller. Yeah, they do three, three Super Bowl rings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Greg Bell driving hard. Down to about the 22, wrapped up by Tim Gordon, the free safety. Yeah, now, now you're seeing Johnny Robinson football. You know, when Zampezi came over to the Rams, one of the things that Robinson was worried about was that if we bring in this offense with throw, 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 we're going to lose our mental toughness in the offensive line, and we won't be able to run the football, especially in the fourth quarter when we really need to run it. But last year proves that wrong as they ran the football well last year. They threw it well. Now they're running it well today. And the run today was set to pass up later. 
Already Bell has 50 yards on seven carries. And Bell has it again. Again, he tries to cut back. Everett trying to block for him, but a gain of only two to the 20 before Scott Case, number 25, finally makes the stop. Yeah, that cutback running is good. The only problem is, is that Bell runs about 25 or 30 yards, and he's carried the ball, what, what did you say, seven times so far? So now that's eight, and you see him leaving the game. It's so hot and humid, and when it's humid, you can't get enough oxygen. So they'll bring in Gaston Green and kind of give Bell a break. Get a little north and south action going. The end of the first quarter here in Atlanta, the Falcons leading 7-3. Humidity, at least 60% humidity. Very little wind here in Atlanta and a threat of rain. And the heat and humidity will become more of a factor as the game goes on. Fans on the sidelines, the electric variety that is, trying to keep people as cool as possible as we start the second quarter here in Atlanta with the Falcons leading the Rams 7 to 3. Steve Zabriskie and Terry Bradshaw in CBS season premiere of the NFL coverage for you. Third down and two. Los Angeles at the Atlanta 19. Greg Bell cutting back again and getting down to the 15. He has enough for the first down. And again, free safety Tim Gordon, 41, made the tackle. The Bell came into this game. You know, he only had one week of practice, Steve. And he said, I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. I've lost 15 pounds. And he said, now, I don't have an attitude problem. Everybody thinks I got an attitude problem. I remember when he came to the Rams in the Dickerson trade where he said, I'm just happy to be here, just happy to have a chance, just want to prove everybody, uh, prove to everyone what a great back I am. Buffalo's behind me. And then after one year, I had a great year. He had contract problems, and now he's signed. But he, in talking to him, I'm confused. I still don't think he's happy. No, I agree with you. The conversation yesterday sort of bore that out. Everett on first down. Completing it to Holohan near the two-yard line. Evan Cooper, the strong safety with the stop, along with Andre Bruce. But Los Angeles knocking on the door with a first and goal at the Atlanta two. That's the same play that Holohan caught earlier when he released outside the linebacker and Everett gunned the ball in there. Left of your screen, Everett just takes a little quick step, turns around, and there's that little drill right there, and Holohan comes back inside. But the defense doesn't change. Normally, what you see is man coverage, aggressive coverage with man-to-man -man people covering their receivers, but not in Atlanta's case. They dropped off in zone. A 13-yard gain, the eighth Ram first down. Bell, touchdown. But there is a penalty flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. Offside against Atlanta. So obviously the Rams will refuse it. Dale Hamer will tell us about it. Offside, number 99, the defense. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. Tim Green, number 99, the offender. Top right of your screen, you saw the defensive end that time. That would have been Joel Williams lined up as a defensive end. He's actually a linebacker, but Everett, quarterbacks get into a cadence where they go hut one or hut one or hut one, and all of a sudden they go hut one, hut two, and that time Everett changed up the cadence. Lansford's extra point is good, and the Rams have come back with two strong drives to take the lead. It is now 10 to 7, Los Angeles. To this point is very simple. Deion Sanders has provided about the only excitement for Atlanta. The Rams on two drives got a field goal and a touchdown. They have Monopolize the football, the clock, and the offensive yardage. And in the second quarter, with 13.25 to go, they lead 10 to 7. And Terry, it sort of has gone so far as expected. And really, Atlanta still needs to get something consistent going on offense. Well, Atlanta, ha Miller hasn't really attempted that many passes. They've tried to run the football, have not been that success successful at it. And the Rams are running the ball extremely well. And that's going to set the passing of Everett up later. Evan Cooper on the return, a penalty flag goes down as Cooper crosses the 30 and gets out near the 40. George Thomas on the return, and it's holding on the run back against Atlanta. Now, these two teams last year were among the least penalized teams 
in the National Football League, and this game today has had too many penalties already. Dale Hamer in his first NFL game as a referee. Holding number 80 of the receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Atlanta had excellent field position, and Marion Campbell's got to be beside himself as they are now back at the 15-yard line. After Thomas's return is called back. Yeah, when you're not running the, when you're not moving the football well offensively, you you rely on special teams, and that time a good return by Evan Cooper, but a penalty on the on the kickoff, and penalties right now are hurting the Falcons. Penalty flag stops play as Gene Lang broke out of the fullback position before the snap. And it's going to be a legal procedure against Atlanta. Yeah, but Lang can do that, Steve. He can break out of there before the snap as long as he's not going toward the line of scrimmage. And he was not doing that. And so, therefore, he can set up and go in motion. And that wouldn't be a penalty. But Mike Kim, number 78, the offensive tackle, also moved on the play. So, offensive linemen can't move anyway. And you can only have one guy in motion to begin with. So it's back to the 10 where it's first and 15. We'll be keeping you up to date on the CBS Sports Wire all day long. Some other action around the NFL. Lang cutting back. And a yard is about it. Mike Peel, first year player out of Illinois, was there. Mike Peel kind of hangs out with Sean Miller. They're, Miller's kind of taking him under his under his belt. He was a, he's actually a second-year guy on injured reserves last year, and Sean Miller's just kind of holding his hand and showing him the ropes. And that time, young Mr. Peel did a fine job. Fans getting a little impatient here. They're tired of this running offense. They want to see that ball in the air. Well, Atlanta may put it up, but Los Angeles now has six defensive backs in the game. Falcons with three wide receivers. Miller to throw. Knocked down again by Sean Miller. Jamie Dukes was blocking on Miller, but Miller at 6-4. Got those big hands up, knocked that down for the second time. What happens is, is that the, the receiver coming behind Miller is too close to the line of scrimmage, so, so no matter how high a release Miller would have to get the ball to the receiver, it would be knocked down by a defensive lineman. You have to have separation with your receivers and the defensive line that time the receiver was too close. Chris Miller, one of four, passing for only six yards. Third down, 15. Almost intercepted. Oh, Glifford Hicks almost had a touchdown to go with the interception as he would have had nobody in front of him. They call him Boom. And he'd like to hit himself right in the head right now. Miller's turning around. This is a timing pattern. Turns around and just guns the football, and there stands Hicks. He never even saw him. You know, a lot of times you'll see quarterbacks turn from one angle and fire to the other, and it's called a timing route where you don't look at the receiver, you just anticipate an area, and Miller threw the ball behind the intended receiver. So Scott Fulhag is on, and the rookie Daryl Henley is back to receive for Los Angeles. Henley out of UCLA. Oh, hey, just does get it away. Whoa, what a kid. Henley at the 40. Down to the 35 of Atlanta. A 49-yard punt. But a great return by Darrell Henley as Guy Bingham saved the touchdown. In quarter, and for the second possession in a row, the Rams will start with excellent field position. They began at the Atlanta 46 on their last possession. It resulted in a touchdown. And now, after the return by Henley, they are at the Atlanta 35. Three wideouts in the game as Ellard motions. And a quick one to Holohan, who holds on, although he was tackled immediately, inside the 30. Evan Cooper right there. There's the hitch again, but the only difference is same formation, typical Ernie Zampezi. Exact same formation. Earlier we saw Henry Ellard, 80, flanked out wide. This time they just took the H back. Holohan, they put him out wide and threw the same little five-yard hitch. You know, that's the beauty of this offense is that you recognize people by their numbers, and so therefore when they're out of place, it changes the coverage. 
the defense must be constantly adjusting constantly on the move man. second down and four at the Atlanta 29 Gaston Green and Tony Casillas right there to nail him behind the line of scrimmage Casillas now in his fourth year out of the University of Oklahoma those tackled right over the center Smith first thing he says I have to be quick with my eyes Smith goes to the right I go to the left there's the tackle but he said I had to when I came back the first thing I have to do is get my eyes to be quick my hands and everything else will follow suit a loss of one on the play it is third and five for Ron Brown but incomplete Scott Case with the coverage but a flag is thrown Everett's having trouble holding his football as the ball once again slips out of his hand there's and, the offside and Atlanta hurts themselves again with a penalty as the incompleted pass would have brought up fourth down offside number 99 of the defense lined up in a neutral zone five yard penalty repeat oh, that's the down. second time 10 green has been called yeah and, and and if you ask me the question, Terry, how, how wide is the neutral zone? It's the, it's the length of the football, which is about 13 inches. So you figure you've got 13 inches, and that's still close. I, I wouldn't want to be any closer to anyone on the offensive line of the Rams or the defensive line of the Falcons. I would want a bigger neutral zone. I wouldn't want to be up that close to hear a guy think. That's exactly what you're doing when that close. <laughs> Third down and one. Red Bell. Whoa. He didn't get it. Scott Case up very quickly to support. The Rams electing to go wide on third and one. They come up short. Yeah, the counter play. When you run counters where the quarterback steps one way and you hand back, they take longer to develop. And when you're going wide, you allow the pursuit of a defense and the Falcons have a great young aggressive quick pursuing defensive team so counter plays in short yardage situations I would think are not very good plays by evidence they're going to have to try to make a field goal now so Mike Lansford who's already kicked one will come on to attempt a 43 yarder now the Holohan's hold and it is no good 51 to go in the second quarter and the Rams not running on all cylinders but leading still 10 to 3, 10 to 7. Marion Campbell wherever he has gone Terry has been known as a superb defensive tactician. He had the purple people leaders in Minnesota had the fearsome foursome in Los Angeles. He's got these guys playing some pretty good defense, even though their offense hadn't done a thing today. Well, if you'll just look at the total last eight games of last year, gave up less than 12 points a game. Earlier, he's at 20, 220 points. So defensively, they're right on schedule to become one of the really great defenses in the National Football League. Miller completes it. Michael Haynes with the reception. It appears to be short of the first down. Jerry Gray, number 25, made the stop. But it may be Atlanta's best gain of the day. Well, Haynes is a burner, and the route that seemed to be popular today is the simple little curls. The real key here is that Miller has time. Little one, two, three, and five step drop sets up and guns the ball, and there's a simple little turn in that time by Haynes. First, oh, well, not a first down, but picked up eight. Haynes led the Falcons last year in touchdown receptions with four. Appears to have the first down as he punches it out to about the 37. And that is only the second Atlanta first down of the day. Seven. Falcons down by three. 
Tip across Gene Lang out of the backfield. Short gain to the 40. Clifford Hicks made the stop. Well, coming up next here on CBS Sports, it's the U.S. Open and the men's final today, the culmination of two great weeks of tennis here on CBS, and how appropriate that the number one and number two seeds, Yvonne Lendl and Boris Becker, will be going head-to-head, -head, almost as exciting as a Terry Bradshaw-Steve Zabriskie tennis match. Yeah, well, Ivan Lendl, Boris Becker, my heroes. Man, those guys can smack it, can't they? They can do it, and they'll be doing it later today right here on CBS. Second down, seven. They have their own 40. Swing to seven. Ball down. Vince Newsom, the free safety, saves a touchdown as Settle picks up the biggest gain of the day for the Falcons. A little dipsy do that time. The blockers for the Falcons allowed the Rams' right defensive side to blitz and come free. When they came free, Miller, with perfect timing, just turns around a little play action and just dinks the ball outside. And there's your screen. Everyone's inside. Ooh, look at Collins, 85, with a good block. And now it's up to Settles to outrun that time. I believe it was 22 Newsom, the free safety, who brings him down. But it was a foot race. John Settle, last year, the first free agent in the history of the National Football League to rush for over 1,000 yards. He gained 28 on the screen pass. First and 10 from the Rams, 32. Sean Collins with his first catch, and he was welcomed to the NFL by Michael Stewart. Yeah, but that's good. You know why that's good? Because Collins is 6'2", 205. He catches him a little old four-yard pass. He takes a heck of a hit, and he jumps right up, and he sends a little message to everyone saying, uh-huh, go ahead, take your shots. I can get it. I'm going to get up. Proves to him that he's tough, I think. I think. Proves to him that he's tough. Well, he got ear holed pretty good right there. It's a gain of three, second down and seven. Plan B guys, you know, with those roster deals where you could go out and sign all these free agents, and these Falcons picked up four of Plan B players, and Heller is a starting tight end off of that, so a good job. That time, Miller just threw the ball too hard. Heller had his guy beat, and all they had to do was just put a nice little touch on him, making an easy catch for him to catch it and turn it up the field. So it's third down and seven. Still at the Los Angeles 28. with a block. Settle trying to get the first down and a penalty flag goes down at the point of the tackle. James Washington coming up from the safety position along with Anthony Newman. And it's against the Falcons again. Atlanta has really hurt themselves with penalties. This will be the fifth against the Falcons. Illegal block, number 85 of the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat third down. It's the rookie Sean Collins with the illegal block. Well, don't forget, Collins got ear hold, as uh, Zabriskie liked to put. Now he gets a chance to return the favor, and he gets his man right in the back. So that is an illegal block. It's a little lower. It's a clip. But you can't be blocking guys in the back. And just poor judgment that time by rookie Collins. Besides that, we were, so he got a good block. That wouldn't hurt anyone. You know, get a, I mean, get a whammer, you know? That's right. Return to favor. You bet. Third down, 13. From the Rams, 34. Green has him. Kevin Green with a sack of Chris Miller. Hey, Green finally got in there. He had 16 and a half sacks last year, only only five and a half at the end of the season. Number 91 down on the line of scrimmage like a defensive end. Gets around that time. Houston Hoover, second-year tackle of the Falcons, gets around him and makes the sack. Only five and a half sacks in the second half of the season. And the reason he said was that the opposing teams would put a back on him. The back would hit him, slow him down, and then the big lineman would pick him up. And therefore, he had to go through two people to make the sack of the quarterback. 
So Atlanta out of field goal range, and Scott Fulhag with a very high, deep punt that lands in the end zone. A 43-yarder by Fulhag. And the Rams will have it back, leading by three. Number 91, Kevin Green. He said you have to be mobile, hostile, and crazy to play this game. And he said, I like to bring this crazy attitude out, and I like to slobber. Yeah, you know, slobber gets him going for these games. So he's slobbering right now because he went around Houston Hoover to get his first sack in 1989. That's another reason they need to make the neutral zone wider, right. too. Better word would be drooling, too, than <laughs> slobber. First and ten Rams at their own 20. Greg Bell, nowhere to go. Mike Gann. Tony Casillas. Rick Bryan. All of the front three right there. A good front three. You look at Casillas and Gann, and, boy, you back it up with the number one draft in 1988, and and uh, uh, Andre Bruce on the outside and Marcus Cotton and you're looking at a potentially great defensive unit that Marion Campbell has here in Atlanta. Then you got Jesse Tuggle and Joel Williams has been around now 11 years. They got a pretty good mixture on defense. Second down and 10. No game by Bell. Everett under pressure sacked by Gann. Rick Bryan from the backside. Gann coming from the left side, number 76. First time Everett has spaced the corners coming up and pressing his receivers. They slow down the receivers coming off the line of scrimmage, allowing Gann to come through and make the sack of Everett. Brian in his sixth year out of Oklahoma. Third down, 21. Bell picking his way. Out across the 15, tripped up by Tim Gordon. The Falcon fans haven't had much to cheer about on offense, but they love this defense. And the more you'll see a young defense make big plays on a team that everyone, including myself, is picked to go to the Super Bowl, the more big plays they make, the more confidence they get, and then the better they get. And the fans are up on their feet now because beyond prime time Sanders and may get another chance. He calls for a fair catch, however, and takes it at the 45 of Atlanta. A 39-yard punt. 10-7 Los Angeles. Well, next weekend, CBS Sports College football coverage will be in Boulder, Colorado. Illinois, the Fighting Illini. Taking on the Buffaloes. Buffaloes already 2-0 this year. They've won 45-20 over a cross-state rival Colorado State yesterday. Eric Bienemany, 156 yards and three touchdowns for the Buffs. That's next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. Right here on CBS College Football for 1989. Miller over the middle behind the intended receiver, Ron Heller. And it bounced off the back of Mel Owens. That's good coverage by Mel Owens. Played outside last year. They're playing him a lot inside this year. His primary responsibility is to line up over the tight end, jam him, and ride with him, and stay with him all the way over the across the football field. And one of the things Miller's trying to do is get his tight end the ball on crossing routes, but he can't lead it and he can't drop it in there because Mel Owens has such tight coverage. Owens in his ninth year out of Michigan. And in his second and ten, still at the Atlanta 45. Lots of time, but nobody open. Now Heller comes free, and it's a first down. As Heller gets into Rams territory at the 41. Richard Brown and Vince Newsom made the stop. Well, without the without the Eagle defense, the confusion is not there for the young line of the Atlanta Falcons. Plenty of time. Miller, he's worried about his feet, whether or not he's going to have enough time. Drops back, 
sets up. His first guy was covered. He stepped up in the pocket as Heller comes off the block there and then turns around, and then he gets the ball to Heller. Notice Green goes outside. Heller goes inside. There's your completion. It's a gain of 15 as they mark it at the Rams 40, first and 10. Heller can't hold on this time, and again, Richard Brown had the coverage, and the Atlanta fans want interference. That's just good coverage. Hey, look, let's give credit where credit's due. That Richard Brown, the guy that was cut, brought back and signed, and it has to start today because of the injuries to the linebacking core, primarily of Freddie Strickland. So now 92, guy that was cut, is starting and does a great job, I think, of covering the tight end Heller. Well, he was on him like a blanket. At Brown only in his second year out of San Diego State. Second and ten. gain of only a couple to the 38. Mark Messner and Michael Stewart, the strong safety, get him there. One of the things coming into the game was that because of, of uh, Scully, the starting guard, and, and Ratloff, the starting center, center for the Falcons, staying out of the game, Miller is not sure. He doesn't know if he has enough confidence in this line put together by the Falcons, and he was concerned. He said, I have to keep my feet planted firmly. Don't show jittery feet. Well, watching that, he looks pretty good. Looks like he has nice, confident feet. He completed the pass, but not nearly enough of the game. Only two yards. It's third and eight. Oh. Incomplete. John Settle had a convoy, and he and Miller are both very upset because there was some clear sailing out there for Settle had he gotten the football. Yeah, that that's a good call. You know, a little screen. You got a team that's got a great pass rush, and those screens let them in there, dink it off, get outside, pull all your linemen, and give it to an all-pro back. And man, those big things should happen, but timing on that thing was just lousy. Daryl Henley, number 20, to the left, and Clifford Hicks, 28, to the right, ready for Scott Fulhag's punt. And Atlanta has punted on the end of every single possession today. Fulhag hangs it up there. It lands at the 10 and goes into the end zone. Albert Shelley was trying to down it. But couldn't get to the ball. A 38-yard punt will be first and 10 Rams at their 20. Miller, one of the things that quarterbacks do, there are three programs to passing. There's a short and the medium and the long passes. And then you correlate those with the, with the steps. Three steps. Look at this. Three times he's thrown three steps. Five steps, which are medium passes, 11 times. Seven steps means he's throwing the ball deep only one time. The reason that's important is we're looking at how much pressure, how many times, how much pressure is going to be on this young Atlanta Falcon offensive line. A lot of medium, a lot of short passing game. Ever trying to throw medium, incomplete, intended for Willie Anderson. And Flipper was past the first down marker, but the ball was overthrown. Charles Dimery and the coverage. Two-minute warning at the... End of the first half, and we'll be right back. The things Chris Miller wanted to do today, he told us yesterday, was keep the offense on the field so the defense wouldn't have to be on the field so much against this Ram offense. It has not worked out that way. The Atlanta defense has been on the field a ton, and as you can see, although Atlanta has made a lot of progress in the second quarter, the Rams still with almost twice as much yardage, and they have the ball again first and 10 at their own 20, leading 10 to 7. For about six to the 26, Albert Shelley and Charles Dimry make the tackle. It was second and ten, not first and ten, so now it's third down and about four yards to go. Coming up at halftime on the NFL Today, Brent Nerve will be along with all the scores, highlights, latest information from around the league, and it's bigger than the office pool, and it's legal. Pat O'Brien has the story of Oregon's new football lottery. Over the middle, and incomplete. Atlanta saying they have the fumble recovery. It was intended for Pete Holohan, and Scott Case picked the ball up. Tim Gordon 
also there, but an incompleted forward pass makes it fourth and four. We're seeing a lot of passes by both teams to their tight ends, and obviously that's where they believe the weakness, the coordinators there is, that's the weakness, and that time Gordon, 41, coming up, making a stop, but we haven't seen the deep passes, we haven't seen the deep crossing routes with the Rams and Zampezi is so famous for. It's been a very, I think, conservative offense run pass-wise by the, by the Rams. Hatcher under some pressure with a very high kick. It's going toward the sideline. And Sanders lets it bounce, and it goes out of bounds. Dion choosing not to return that one. He had a 68-yarder for a touchdown in the first quarter. He did. You know, and Deion Sanders is a young man that's been, everyone says, going to be one of the greatest defensive backs to play the game, National Football League. And he said that he doesn't believe that special teams in the National Football League take pride in their work and he said that's the reason that if I score a touchdown on a punt return I'm going to give the 10 guys blocking for me a choice of cash a gold chain or a Gucci watch and I guess that if you if he has three of those and you got cash gold chain and Gucci watch then you have to have a meeting with Dion and his agents to kind of come up with something else you know <laughs> like a, a Mercedes and a motorcycle and it'll, seven rides. it'll be interesting to see if he after three for a touchdown what he goes to Miller on first down. Sean Collins with a leaping grab. Yes, no, they disagree. One official says it's a catch. The other says no, he's out of bounds. Jerry Gray had the coverage. And we'll see what they eventually decide. Well, the, the, the decision is, is, had the receiver caught the ball and come down on his own, would his feet have landed in bounds? Or would his momentum carried him out of bounds? Hard to tell because he caught the ball and was pushed out while he was in the air by Jerry Gray. They're giving him the catch. I think it's a proper call. Gray did give him a shove, and even at that, he got one foot in bounds. So it's a first down for Atlanta. Gene Lang with nowhere to go. Kevin Green with the bear hug. And maybe even a slight loss on the play. Green just loved it. He told me before the game, don't you just love it? Ain't this just great? I just love this game. Does everyone in this room appreciate how much football means to everyone? I just love playing football. But I walked up and said, you know, I, I wish I had a uniform on. I'm kind of fired up about this myself. <laughs> this guy loves to play. And that's nice to know. Well, he played right through John Settle, and he's going to take a little break as he lays down on the sideline. <laughs> We've been there. Yeah, got a little hamstring problem. Yeah, a very high hamstring problem. <laughs> it's going to be third down and a yard to go for Atlanta. They have the ball There's at the 39. There are some of the fans. This is Pom Pom Day at Fulton County Stadium. So the Atlanta fans up and waving their pom poms on occasion, but they haven't had a whole lot to wave them about yet. Rams leading 10 to 7. 102 left to play in the first half. Complete to Heller. Clifford Hicks runs him down, but not before he picks up a first down out near the 48 of the Falcons. See, those are real simple routes because what you do when you throw a football is if you throw, if you have a receiver going to the left, you must have one coming to the right, and all the quarterback Miller is doing is bringing his flanker in, sending his tight end out. He reads the coverage. If the coverage drops in, then he dinks it to the tight end. Good read by Miller. Fine catch by Heller. First down, Falcons. That is the first third down conversion that Atlanta has been able to come up with today. Dixon out of the small college, Stephen F. Austin in Texas, as Paul McFadden comes on for the extra point. And it is good. 
to 49 seconds remaining in the first half. The Falcons have come back to take the lead by four. Gets by his man, Henley. There's the throw. There's the catch. And when you're a young quarterback, touchdown passes are hard to come by, so what do you do? Yeah, that's what you do right there. Throw your hands up. And Celebrate. Get fired up. Celebrate. Robert Del Pino and Ron Brown back for the kickoff. Del Pino in the end zone. He decides to take it out. Four yards deep. Oh. He gets it out to about the 27th. So a good return by Del Pino with just 42 seconds left to go in the first half. Both offenses have sputtered. The Falcons with the big plays for their 14 points. The Sanders punt return, the Dixon reception for Miller. And still, Jim Everett's trying to get something consistent going. The Rams have really only had one good drive. Right. They haven't really used their offense so far. They haven't thrown the deep crossing routes, the deep post ends, the deep corners, which they're so famous for. As MPZ offense with 40 seconds left should be very easy for them to score. Draw the bell. Trying to get outside, and he does in the grasp of Charles Dimery. Stopping the clock with 30 second, 37 seconds left to go in the half. Yeah, when I meant it should be easy for them to score, I didn't mean it was going to be easy for them to score. I mean that it is such an explosive offense that scoring from with 30 seconds left, I've seen it so many times playing against Dan Faust. Boom, there it is. Touchdown. You go, Gee whiz, how'd they do that? We haven't seen that today. Bell gained eight, so it's second down and two. The Rams at their own 35. 37 seconds left in the half. Complete the bell. Good move. And up across the 45 before Joel Williams and Bobby Butler hold on. And now the Rams stop the clock with 28 seconds left to go in the half. They call him J.R. John Robinson and one of the things that you get from the players in talking to them and covering the Rams, they all seem to have sort of a special feeling about JR, don't they, Terry? Well, they like him. They say the player's coach, he understands, he has the motivation, he understands players on all levels, all rights. He just has the ability to communicate. And, they, and, and as the players tell us, he said, hardest working guy I believe I've ever seen. Bell told us he's the hardest working coach I've ever seen. And, He's got a tremendous, the players just absolutely respect him uh, to the very utmost. And the fact that he's come in and, and been the, the great coach for seven years with the Rams, he gave him some cohesiveness and continuity, and, and they've responded. Plus, he's done an excellent job of putting together a staff that knows exactly how to win football games. He is the longest head coaching tenure in Rams history with this seventh year. Everett under pressure. Slides down as he gets into Falcon territory. And big number 77, Rick Bryan, pounced on him. Timeout, Los Angeles. Yeah, I thought for a second that Everett was going to stay there complaining. You got to get up. It's two minutes. You got to get up or you got to call a timeout. And that time, Jim thought what he was worried about was that he thought he had gone down in time and should not. And a penalty should have been called for a late hit on, on roughing the quarterback. Well, it was very close. Rick Bryan in hot pursuit. Yeah, Bryan's chasing him. There's the slide, and then there's the hit. Hey, that's one of those throw the, you know, flip a coin. It, it, had he'd already been down and had his head down, I would say, yeah, but how are you going to judge whether Bryan could have stopped? And, you know, here we go again. No, I don't think he could have. Marcus Cotton, number 51, really had pressure on Everett and chased him out of there, and Bryan finished the job. But... There was a gain of eight on the play, so it'll be second down and two. Yeah, you know, when, you're, when a quarterback is running with the football, Steve, if he slides feet first, he can't get up and run with it, and if you hit him, it's a penalty. But if he slides face first, and you don't touch him, he can get up and run for a touchdown. So he's protected if he runs and slides feet first. That was just too close. Yes, it was. Falcons leading 14 to 10 in the final seconds of the half. Everett almost intercepted. Almost picked off by Bobby Butler. Yeah, this 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 Atlanta defense has got the Rams off just totally in disarray. The you know the flow's not there. It's nothing like we've seen in preseason. 
you know, things aren't happening. You know, and good things have to happen, even to a veteran team, for them to build their confidence. And if good things aren't happening, you lose your confidence. It's just natural. And right now, the passing game, hey, it's, it's just not clicking. It's just not happening. Not now. Not in the first half, anyway. Everett has completed 7 of 16 for 72 yards. And the Rams are 1 of 7 on third down conversion. Looking long with 9 seconds to go. It's caught by Anderson. Touchdown. Whoa. Henry Ellard came up with it. Ellard and Anderson both went up for the ball. And Ellard holds on for a Los Angeles touchdown as time has run out in the first half. Evan Cooper, Scott Case, Flipper Anderson, and Henry Ellard, two from each team, all went up at the same time. Out of the Rams' Hail Mary pass, and one of the reasons defensive backs are not offensive receivers is that primarily they don't have good hands. But 25 Case intercepted 10 passes and was in the Pro Bowl last year. But Ellard goes up. It looks like it's a tie between Case and Ellard, and in that case, tie goes to the receiver. Touchdown, Rams. A 54-yard touchdown. And Lansford, with no time left on the clock, converts the extra point. Oh! After the Falcons had battled back with a big play of their own to lead, Los Angeles closes out the first half with a 54-yard touchdown. That's the end of the half with a score Los Angeles 17, Atlanta 14. The season is always an exciting time, but the state of Oregon has sweetened the pot this year. They've given fans a chance to win or lose a little money legally. And our Pat O'Brien is in Oregon, where he's been checking out the state's new sports action game. Mary Carpenter of Troutdale, Oregon, is doing something she's never done before. She's placing a bet on professional football. For a dollar, Mary owns four games today. Green Bay, Buffalo, Philadelphia, and Minnesota. Mary's not alone. Football lottery has arrived in the Pacific Northwest, and the Pacific Northwest loves it. Oregon lottery, could you hold, please? No play action, but a shot. Touchdown! I'm from Seattle, so I like to watch the Seahawks and LA Rams. Chicago Bears. Brian Bosworth. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you can pick from 4 to 14 games here. Spend from $1 to $20 a ticket. For a buck, if you win four, that's $8. Beat the point spreads on all 14 games, $8,000. The people here are hoping to raise $9 million annually for local collegiate sports and scholarships. They've already raised the interest in the game. We have people talking about injury lists, weather reports, uh, uh, point spreads are comparing our line to the Nevada line on a day-by-day -day basis. So it's really created a lot of interest in the game, a lot more interest. Big Football lottery failed in Delaware in 1976, but in 1989, the experts in Las Vegas believe the time is right for those dollar lotto folks. Basically, it's the old story. Where do you think the money for sports betting should go? Should it go to buy an illegal bookmaker, a new Cadillac, or should it go to support intercollegiate athletics in Oregon? I think the answer is pretty easy. We're concerned about the domino theory. We're concerned that other states will start their own lotteries, creating a whole new generation of gamblers, a whole new group of sports fans betting on our games. The river that runs through Portland flows ironically to the north, where football allegiances around here have long rested with the Seattle Seahawks. But now, with this little card, football allegiances and a dollar here, a dollar there, will flow in every direction. Up and down the Willamette River, people tell us they love the idea. Their favorite betting team, the 49ers and you can bet they'll be watching differently. I think uh, it's gonna get to the borderline people that they didn't really follow football that much before. There's a lot of betting going on, you know that in football, but it's gonna get the housewife that she's gonna think, hey, I can sit there and pick a few like my husband has done. Yeah, we think we might have a winner. Which brings us back to Mary Carpenter, who is watching today with the remote control in one hand, that ticket in another. $8,000 buys a lot of groceries. Pat O'Brien, CBS Sports, Orient. Oregon. What's your feeling, Art? Well, I think it's long overdue, really. I think uh, a lottery like this is uh, managed by the state gives people a legitimate outlet to go ahead and wager on games. They're doing it anyway. You know, it's overdue. All right. Let's send you back to the stadium now and the game you're enjoying on CBS. Have live coverage of the night. Play for the front of his car that said prime time. And he certainly has lived up to his nickname in many respects. Lansford to kick it off for Los Angeles. Thomas 
brings it out and gets across the 20 to about the 22 before he's hauled down there. Well, we talked about how the yardage in the first half had not been what was expected. Look at the Rams, 219 yards. And again, even though they haven't had a great deal of success, they have been balanced. And look at that, 12 rushing yards for the Atlanta Falcons. They are not going to be successful if they don't do a whole lot better than that. Yeah, you're not going to do much in this league if, if you don't rush for more than 12 yards in the first half. But it's, it's not like they don't have the ability. They certainly have the ability to do it. Chris Miller. The pain's in motion. Under pressure. And he's finally run out of bounds on the far side. Mike Wilcher and Sean Miller were chasing him. Doug Reed had a little chase going on as well. You know, one of the things I noticed when Miller scrambled out of the pocket, his receivers came back to block for him. <laughs> which is a little bit contrary to what you want. You don't want them to come back to block because you don't plan on running. You want to be you, open. Hey, deep, baby, go deep. And let me throw this thing. I don't want to run with it, but his receivers that time came back and attempted to block for Miller instead of going downfield and giving him a target. He got back to the line of scrimmage as well. Well, actually, he may have lost a yard on the play, so it's second down and 11. Dean Lang banging up in there. And good second effort. Gets him out to about the 24. Sean Miller, 98, on the bottom of the pile again. One of the reasons they're not, the Falcons have not been able to run well is Jamie Dukes is, a, is naturally a, a guard. And the, and the right tackle, Hoover, who's starting at tackle, is naturally a guard. The starting center is out, and the starting left guard is out. And Tommy Robinson, the left guard, is naturally a tackle. <laughs> And Bill Fralick, who's it's at the right tackle, just came into camp this week. So there you have it. So you want to know why they're not being able to run a lot of it has to do with these guys who are out of position. Fralick, the right guard. Miller again getting away from the pressure. Kevin Green on him, and he's going to get it. There it is. It happened again. Miller outside. And this time, Michael Haynes, 81, looks at Miller, doesn't know what to do, is confused, starts going back, and never does attempt to go downfield and give Miller an opportunity to throw the football. So it brings up fourth down. Scott Fulhag on to punt it away. And Daryl Henley back to receive for Los Angeles. is 10 high and short and out of bounds just into Los Angeles territory they'll market it about the 49 well next Sunday you'll see a CBS NFL doubleheader right here on most of these same stations in game one some of you will see the Philadelphia Eagles take on the Washington Redskins others of you will see the Dallas Cowboys right here in Atlanta against these same Atlanta Falcons in game two it's Minnesota Vikings in a Central Division matchup with the always tough Chicago Bears. So check the local listings in your area for the game and time. It all begins next Sunday with the NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Jim Everett will try to get it going again. Good field position for Los Angeles. First and 10 of their own 49. Robert Del Pino. For a gain of about three to the Atlanta 48 in the grasp of John Rady, number 59. Yeah, Rady's one of those young inside backers that Marion Campbell loves, and they play, the Falcons play their inside backers off the ball deep, and once the snap is taken, they key those guards, and then once they're sure what's happening, then they explode up inside, and Rady looked inside, saw the handoff, and man, he was there like a bullet, put the hit on the guy and bring him down. CBS Sports Wire keeping you up to date. What else is happening in the NFL today? Second down and seven. Lots of time for Everett. And a completion to Henry Eller. Inside the 25, Bobby Butler with the hit immediately. But it'll be a Los Angeles first down. Cornerback Butler's off of Eller deep. And one of the things the corners think is, all right, now, when Eller comes off the ball, there he is. No one's on him. Safety that was up. 
Look at this separation. My gosh, no wonder Ellard got open. And with the arm that Everett has, man, that's a mismatch. Oops, mismatch. My tongue in the teeth there. Had my tongue over my eye tooth and couldn't see what I was saying. From the 33. Greg Bell running hard inside the 30. Bobby Butler again making the tackle for Atlanta. Andre Bruce, 93. We've talked about him earlier. This guy was the number one draft choice last year, and that time Bell high-stepped it right over him. But Bruce, is, we, haven't, we haven't heard a lot about him. And one of the things that Bruce wanted to do in this game was to be able to be turned loose. He wants to come after the quarterback. He wants to rush the passer. And that time is thinking of rushing the passer enabled Bell to go right by him with the run. Bell has carried 16 times for 85 yards. Fake the bell. Ellard behind him and incomplete. Ellard hammered as he goes down. Jesse Tuggle and Evan Cooper. Yeah, there's one of those deep crossing routes we were talking about. A little counter action. The counter action by the back and the quarterback is allowed. Watch the linebackers. See him. Notice that inside Tuggle and Rady. Notice they stayed inside. And now all of a sudden Rady says, whoa, I mean, that's Tuggle 58. Whoa, my guy got behind me. He turns and gets underneath. That time Ellard, no lane at all for Everett to try to get the ball in. Evan Cooper, the strong safety, took advantage and put a real hit on him. Third and five from the Atlanta 28. Short drop by Everett, who will run. Sliding down as he gets to the 20. And he has some words for Marcus Cotton, who was all over him. Yeah, Cotton. Marcus Cotton, a lot of times what happens, what happens is when a quarterback of all people get beyond you, and there's Cotton, Everett's down. Now that should have been a flag. There's your flag. Throw the flag. Now, if you want to protect your quarterback, throw the flag. But And Everett gives him a shot. But Cotton's a frustrated linebacker. The guy's been hurt. He hasn't panned out. He's, he's supposed to be in there with Bruce as the two, as the two tandem, these rookie guys. But a little frustration. Everett paid for it, but he got the first down. Bell looking for the seam. Down to the 15-yard line. Bell has really been the workhorse. And when you consider, Terry, the fact that he has only had really less than two weeks of workouts before today. He's already carried 17 times for 90 yards. Yeah, but he said, I'm in the best shape I've ever been. And one week of practice, maybe that's all he's actually had two weeks now. And everyone thought possibly Gaston Green, the number one draft choice last year out of UCL UCLA, would be the starting tailback after the really good preseason he had. But Bell is Robinson's man, and he's going to run him. Gaston Green in there to give Bell a rest on second down and five. Green has it. Gain of about two. Tim Gordon, the free safety, with excellent run support, meeting him right about at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there's two different styles of tailbacks for these for these Rams. Number one, when Bell is running with the ball, he is Robinson's type of back. He is a boom, a power runner. Guy sees it and explodes, whereas Green is not a power runner, but he's a guy, if he sees the scene, he has the speed and he outruns everyone. Green the power. Gas and then uh, Gaston Green, the speed, Bell, the power. Third down and two. Uh, Green picked up three. The ball at the 13 of Atlanta. Rams leading 17-14. 9-10. Left to go in the third quarter. Everett getting away from the pressure. Into the end zone for a touchdown. Oh, Robert Moore. Moore and Everett head on at about the two, and Jim Everett won that battle. Robert Moore put his head down, had no idea where Everett was. Notice the short drop. There's the little five-step drop. The rush goes beyond Everett. He sees the seam, takes off. Now he's close to the goal line. Moore had an opportunity to knock his head off, put his head down. Everett slid right over the top. Gutsy run by Everett. 13-yard touchdown run. Mike Lansford with the extra point. And the Rams on their first possession of the second half with 9.01 left to play in the third quarter, now lead by 10. 
The Los Angeles Rams have moved down to a 10 point lead and Jim Everett's gutsy 13 yard run. And you can see back in the background there, Jim Everett's new haircut. Yeah, I got him a flat top. Say, said he, every time he went, he got about two inches of his haircut and it cost him 12, 15 bucks. And he said, this one cost me 450 and I gave the guy a quarter tip. So he said, flat tops are back in style. I like it, looks good on him. I might try it myself, but no one know I'd cut the top. <laughs> so they wouldn't know it's flat, right? You and me both, pal. <laughs> Lansford's kick. Taken by Thomas near the goal line. And George Thomas hammered as he crosses the 15. A penalty flag goes down upon the tackle. George Bethune, a rookie linebacker out of Alabama with the hit. And a rookie referee, Dale Hamer. There's no foul on the play. There's no foul on the play. So the infamous inadvertent flag and no penalty. And Atlanta will have a first and 10 at their own 12. Let's look again at Jim Everett's 13 yard run for the Rams touchdown. Yeah, if you're going to win championships, you've got to just turn it all loose. And I think one of the real bright spots for the Rams is the fact that right now Everett holds his poise, gets in there now. Do I go down? Do I become an athlete? We've got to win this game. Yeah, I'm going to go down. I'm putting my head down. I'm running over that safety. After all, they don't call me the blade for nothing. There's the <laughs> spike. <laughs> got to like that. First and 10 Atlanta, their own 17. Miller flips it out incomplete, intended for Settle. And the Atlanta offense continues to sputter. Falcons have not started to drive in Rams territory. There have been no turnovers in this game. Atlanta's drives have started at their own 10, their own 15, their own 26, their own 45, their own 30, their own 22, and now their own 17. So they have not enjoyed a very good field position. Second and 10. 35 and still running but the whistle blew at about the 38. Mel Owen trying to bring him down with some help but Heller at 6'3 and 240 holding on. Yeah these are just real pretty routes. Looks like what one team does the other team copies. This route the same route that Holohan runs for the Rams. Release outside go up the field clear the linebacker and then the line the quarterbacks both Miller and Everett have strong arms and Heller gets outside and wham, there's that ball. Good shot by Miller. First and 10 at the 38. Quick toss complete to Gene Lang. Lang to about the 35. 45, that should be Vince Newsom. And Michael Stewart on the stop. Yeah, that's they're passing the football. Thorne and Shaw here, Steve. And they're using their passing game, you know, they're using it like a running attack now and and just one, two, three, get set up and then get rid of the football, takes the pressure off the offensive line, takes the pressure off the quarterback and then able to get rid of it. They put it in the hands of those backs and let them run with it. Second down and four at the 44, two tight ends for Atlanta. Miller in trouble and he's down at the 35. Alvin Wright. Number 99. Yeah, one thing you don't want to see happen is sacks by tackles coming up the middle. That's the, you know, that's a quarterback stands in a pocket, and the pocket, the pressure should be driven to the outside. That's why it's called a pocket. And the one place you do not ever want to allow a breakdown is right up in the middle, because then the quarterback has is everyone in his face and he either gets sacked and he definitely can't throw the football right right up the middle great pressure gets the sack rams were the best at that last year in the national football league Brought john settle settle bang oh. for the first down second and third effort and brent Ferrandez finally has to make the tackle but not before settle goes for a first down when teams like to pressure you, like to blitz, like to rush, the thing to slow them down with is show the draw, delayed draw this time, a deep eye set, 
Settle gets in there, reads the hole, and then turns on the speed and the power, and then drives for the first down. That's John, a good call. John, uh, only five foot nine, but he weighs 200 pounds, and he picked up 14 yards. The ball at the Rams 49. Kenny Flowers trying to turn the corner. Boy, did it shut down in a hurry as Vince Newsom and Michael Stewart came up quickly. Loss of a couple back to the Atlanta 49. Hard to run outside on these guys, isn't it? The pursuit, you know, with so many linebackers, it's hard to get everyone outside to block them. Everyone's flying up the middle, flying off tackle, coming around two guys to the outside. So it's, it's very complicated blocking this type of, of attack by the Rams, especially if you want to take it wide. The best way to do is fake it going wide and then counter and come back inside of it. 520 left to go in the third quarter. Los Angeles leading by 10. On second and 12, tipped and incomplete. Kevin Green covering and getting a hand on it. Yeah, I, I, if there's one thing Green's doing better, I noticed today, is that not only is he is an excellent pass rusher, but he has that ability now to drop off and play pass coverage. John Settle on the Atlanta bench being attended to by the trainers. As Settle may be injured, it looks like they're working on his right ankle, and the tape is ready. Third down and 12. Atlanta's still at their own 49. Sean Collins. First down. Oh. Anthony Newman, the safety with the coverage, but Collins with a fine move. A gain of 19. And they move it down to the Rams 31. Collins from Northern Arizona. Very, very highly regarded rookie. Went to the scouting combine tryouts and just wowed everybody. First and ten. Gene Lang. Good yardage, a gain of about five as he gets it to the 26 before Mel Owens and Vince Newsom knock him down. Yeah, see, that's the place to run, go up the middle, because if you take an attack on a power attack, a running attack, straight at it, straight at the middle of a, off of a defense, then there's no reaction time. You hit, you bounce, you get into the secondary. When you string it out and go wide, you give everyone in the second, uh, in the linebackers and the ends a chance to come off a block, feel in their lane, and make the stop. John Settle back in the game at the tailback spot on second down and four. Swing pass to Settle, and Mel Owens right there. Settle apparently completed the play. There's an injured Los Angeles Ram down at the 30-yard line, and it appears it's Alvin Wright. So the Rams with a timeout for the injury to right with 4.15 left to go in the third quarter. Coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams very upset with the officials because the injury to Alvin Wright he feels might have been caused by an illegal block of some kind maybe even a clip. Wright walked off under his own power. John Robinson was also out on the field jawing at the officials. No penalty was assessed. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. Third down and eight. Atlanta at the Los Angeles 29. And John Settle with the ball. Inbounds and knockdown as he gets to the 25. Gain of about four. James Washington and Daryl Henley on the stop. Prevent one of the reasons that people say, why didn't they, why didn't the Falcons throw the football? But it, if you can catch a defense that is in man coverage and you pitch the ball to a back like that and you run everyone off, there's no support, there's no one come up to make the tackle. And that was the thinking behind that pitch to settle. No one there to make the tackle, get him outside, and we got a touchdown. Didn't happen. Paul McFadden in a sixth year of Youngstown State. Chris Miller will hold it at the 33. It'll be a 43-yard attempt. 
And it is wide to the right. Three minutes and six seconds remaining in the third quarter and the score remaining. Los Angeles 24 and Atlanta 14. Like so many kickers after a miss, alone with his thoughts. It is a lonely job as he misses one. And the Rams take over first and ten. At their own 26, leading by 10 with 3.06 to go in the third. Ever with a quick drop to Ellard. Almost picked off, but Ellard got it and has a first down out to the 42. Tim Gordon. And Bobby Butler almost picked it off. Yeah, sometimes you get it. You know, when a team is down, they start thinking, well, you know, we've been playing good defense and, and, and we've got the Hail Mary at the half. It kind of broke their back. And now Butler comes out. It's the little hitch that we saw the Rams run in the first quarter to Eller. And now Butler comes out and says, yeah, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to gamble. He gambled on the interception and missed it, whereas possibly he could have run through and, and at least knocked the ball down. A 17-yard game. Bell. Over the pile for a good gain up near midfield. Now let's go to New York for an NFL update. Brent Musburger. Well, Steve, Barry Sanders has scored his first touchdown for the Detroit Lions. The Heisman Trophy winner, four consecutive carries here in the second half. And the Lions take a four-point lead on the Phoenix Cardinals. Back to Steve. Thanks, Brent. Ten-point lead for the Rams, 24-14. And as you see, the waning moments of the third quarter here in Atlanta. Rams have put together a couple of good drives and they try to they'd like to do another one here which may put the game away for them but big plays have really been the story. Second down five. Bell again. This time nowhere to go. 76 Mike Gann the first to meet him out of Notre Dame. Well, Gann will get credit for the for the tackle. But the one that the player that really disrupted the entire offensive program that time was Rady. And Rady came off his linebacker shot. And man, he came firing in there, split the guard and tackling, got right in the backfield and knocked off all the blockers. And when you do something like that, you know, someone else ought to be able to stand there and make the tackles. But Rady's the guy. I saw it. Hey, John, I saw it. Congratulations. It's a heck of a job. Third and five now. Still at the 48 of Los Angeles. thrown by Everett who wants a penalty on the play. Flipper Anderson was the intended receiver. And Andre Bruce had pressure and there is a flag down. And it is deep in the Atlanta secondary. And it is going to be against the Falcons. And it's another penalty that really hurts Atlanta because it would have brought up a fourth down. And prime time. Illegal contact. Number 23 at the defense. First down. The nine-year veteran Bobby Butler out of Florida State called for the penalty, moving the ball into Atlanta territory at the 47. Pass interference rules have been have been slackened a little bit, and that enabling a, a cornerback and safety to fight a little bit more with the receiver. But one thing you must know is that once that receiver clears five yards down past the line of scrimmage, you cannot put your hands on him and push him, and that's what Butler did. Sixth penalty against Atlanta for 45 yards. Everett to Holohan, complete for a first down at the Atlanta 30. Evan Cooper on the hit. That's just a seam pass. We've seen it five times today, and all that is is that Everett comes up. He looks out across there, and he sees zone. He says, all right. He makes an audible at the line of scrimmage or has a check with me. He calls that play. He drops back, and all he does is read the linebackers. And once he sees them drop deep, he knows it's zone. He turns around and splits the linebackers with the pass to his tight end. It's a gain of 17, and they're going to let time run out here at the end of the third quarter. Holohan with four catches for 55 yards. That's the end of the third quarter here in Atlanta with a score. The Rams 24 and the Falcons 14. Final 15 minutes of the ball game, and the Rams retain the ball and remain in control as a costly penalty to Atlanta 
on third down on this drive has kept the drive going for the Rams. They lead. And they've had the ball already for three minutes and six seconds. First and ten at the Atlanta 30. get rid of it now and he completes it to Damone Johnson inside the 10 knocked down at the 8 by Andre Bruce Everett moving out of the pocket a good job by the foul you know everybody's covered and there's no pressure on now Everett looks in there stays in there there's the pump little pump covered up go to the right I'll go ahead and run. Now he's looking downfield, pulls up, and then his eyes take him back across the field, and Damone Johnson did exactly what he's supposed to do. He found the open area, threw his hands up, and gave Everett that big target. Everett got the ball to him. It's a gain of 22 yards. First and goal from the eight. Greg Bell. Touchdown. As he eluded Evan Cooper at about the four-yard line and just waltz right on in there yeah what's happening right now boy is real clear is that this falcon defense has just been on the field so long they're they're hanging their heads down they're tired the offense hasn't been able to give them a break and now bell hesitates going inside there's a little dip back to the outside and now the most is everyone's sl sliding falling down case is standing there he gets into the end zone but it appears to me right now the falcons defense is a very tired bunch of guys Lansford on to attempt yet another extra point. So now with 14.02 left to play in the ball game, the Rams pad their lead 31-14 and will return after this word from your local station. Steve Zabriskie and Terry Bradshaw with you in Atlanta. 14.02 left to go in the game and the Rams up big as they have taken control of the game here in the second half. George Thomas wrestled out of bounds by Frank Stams. And the Rams have really been in control. Ever since, Terry, they scored at the end of the first half on that 46-yard pass play and regained the lead, they've had the momentum on their side, and they've ate up a lot of the clock in this drive. Right. You can see it. Six plays, 74 yards, four minutes, the big play at halftime. And then the penalty coming out on the first drive in the second half, in which they had the Rams stop. The Falcons did. Got the penalty, pass interference. They take it in. And then the last drive, uh, just right now, the Falcon defense is exhausted. This offense to the Falcons needs to move the ball. Bell, as you saw, with over 100 yards, five yards of carry. Miller fires and completes it to Michael Haynes, short of the first down. And about the 36 of Atlanta, Jerry Gray hit him immediately. And again, the CBS Sports Wire keeping you up to date on the rest of today's action. Second down and one after the gain of nine. Gene Lang. First down and a couple of more. Close to the 39 before Richard Brown makes the stop along with Alvin Wright. A couple of things that need to happen here. Number one, obviously, the Falcons need to move the football, need to score. Unfortunately for the Falcon defense, they need to score quickly, rapido. They need to score rapidly and, and, and put some points on the board, and then their defense has to go back out on the field and stop the Rams, and then they have to do it again. But right now, score is the most important thing. Not a field goal, but a touchdown. That's the only way they get back in the game. 31-14 Los Angeles. Sean Collins, first down, and he's into Los Angeles territory at the 44. Richard Brown on the tackle. Well, Collins, the number one draft choice. Big kid, big target. He's tough. He'll go over the middle. These are the scouting reports on him that the Falcon coaches tell us about. Goes over the middle. He was a tight end in college. There he is lined up next to the tackle, like in a tight end position, but he played tight end at Northern Arizona, so obviously the man can block. He'll get in there and he'll mix it up, but he's very courageous, and we see Miller getting him the ball. 17-yard gain. Miller now with over
over 200 yards passing. Trying to flip it out to settle, finally gets it to him, but to no avail. Mike Wilcher right there. That's just great play by Wilcher. The, it, was a, it was a delayed screen, this time to settle, and the linebackers are all over it, and there's nothing to do. The best thing to do there uh, uh, for the quarterback, Miller, is just throw it up here in the stands and let someone have a souvenir. A loss of two on the play. It's second down and 12 now. And there you see the stats on Miller, over 200 yards on the day. Yeah, hey, that looks good. 17 for 27, nice percentage. Got him a touchdown, no interceptions, over 200 yards. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that, you bet. Actually a loss of three, second to 13. Miller over the middle, complete to Sean Collins. Not enough for the first down, but it's at the Rams 40. A reminder again that coming up next here on CBS Sports, following NFL coverage, Yvonne Lendl and Boris Becker, the one and two seeds in the U.S. Open, going for the men's championship right here on CBS coming up and next. And it's hot in New York. It's hot. We've seen them fall out. We even saw a little ball girl yesterday get a little, you know, running across there. Got a little injury, so it ought to be a dandy. These guys don't have an ounce of fat on them, Lindell and Becker. It could be a marathon match, too. 300,000 to the winner. Hmm. What could I do with 300,000? <laughs> For a few sets of tennis, let's go out and play this afternoon. Flip. Nobody pay us. Complete. Stacy Bailey driven back, but Bailey had enough for the first down. It appeared Daryl Henley driving him back behind the marker. Well, this is really smart by Stacy Bailey. You don't realize what a great job Bailey did on the top right of your screen, right in the bottom left. Now Bailey's up top. Notice a blitz down to your left. Bailey has to see the blitz from all the way across the field and run a blitz control. And the blitz control was a five-yard hitch. He did that by reading all the way across, picked up the blitz, Miller saw it, and both of these guys, that time Bailey and Miller, were on the same page. Really a smart play by Bailey. Miller now has completed seven passes in a row. He was first in ten at Atlanta at the Los Angeles 33. 31-14, Rams leading and timeout call. 9.29 left to go in the ball game, and we'll be back. In this game has to do with the play, although the Atlanta defense has played well, of the Los Angeles defense. They have just not allowed the Falcons to do anything on the ground, although they've gotten their passing game going lately. Really, the Rams defense posing enough of a problem that Atlanta can only score on big plays. It's 31 to 14. We've got nine and a half minutes to go in the ball game, and telling you, Terry, it's, it's uh, going to be a problem for Atlanta if they do not get the football going on the ground. Hey, if you don't have your offensive lineman in there, your starters in there from training camp to the opening game, you're not going to have any kind of continuity, especially in the running game. Yeah, maybe throwing, but not running, and it's showing today with Scuttle and Ratloff out, there's no running attack. Not like the Falcons won't. Miller throwing along. Oh! Means touchdown. three-yard touchdown pass to Michael Haynes, who beats Clifford Hicks for I'm, six. I'm talking one of the great throws. One, two, three, set up, fire the football, and Haynes is nowhere near the defensive back that time. The ball was thrown way before he was able to even get near Clifford Hicks. Outstanding throw, beautiful route. Yeah, you bet. Young guy, number 12. Those 12 numbers are good numbers. <laughs> Yeah, one of them's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> More than one of them. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> Paul McFadden converts the extra point. Now it's 30 to 21 or 31 21. Bringing the Falcons back to within 10. And they are excited at Fulton County Stadium. Thomas or Ron Brown into the outside. Corralled out of bounds by Floyd Dixon, one of the few guys that can run with him. A 45-yard return. Well, the Falcons may not be able to run the ball very well, Terry, but Chris Miller's passing it well. He has completed eight in a row for 96 yards and a touchdown on the day. 20 of 30. 
for 250 yards now. Well, he's doing his job, and what happened now is, is that the Falcons' defense has to stop. They have to stop the Rams. The, the special teams had a chance. They got in there. They messed it up. Had the Rams back on their own 15-yard line, let them out. Brown, great job. Now the Falcon defense has to come to the occasion, has to rise. Gaston Green for a loss. Hauled down by Tony Casillas. Casillas says, I want to be the one nose tackle in the National Football League who is aggressive, who has a lot of ability, who moves around, who's mobile. I don't want to just sit there and be one of those guys, like he says, that people think of a nose tackle and think of guys that live in a cave. He said, not me. I want to be very active. Well, Tony Casillas was very active that time. Loss of four, second down and 14. Rams at their own 39. Gaston Green. Only a couple. Jesse Tuggle stopping him in the middle. You don't ordinarily hear this much noise in Atlanta. Wouldn't it be something if this crowd got a penalty for crowd noise in this ball game? Yeah, give him an award. You know, give him an award. It's pom pom day, and they're using them. Well. Opening game of the year, normally, even for teams that have uh, not been winning over the last few years, you at least have a sellout, and that's not the case here in Atlanta. They want you to win, and, yeah, I guess that's the way it ought to be, but the ones that are here are certainly getting vocal. Falcons with six defensive backs. Third and long. Incomplete, no flag. Intended for Henry Ellard and Charles Dimry all over it. Fourth down and ten. Tight coverage. The ideal route that time, since it was a deep route, would have would have been to have the receiver come back to the inside. There would have been no way that Dimery could have gone through the receiver without getting a penalty. That time the receiver ran to the sideline. The ball was a little bit underthrown, allowed Dimery to knock it down. Deion Sanders to receive the punt by Hatcher. Very high for the far sideline. It'll go out of bounds and the crowd doesn't like it because primetime didn't get his chance. Right. They're finally starting to show some respect here in the first game for primetime. Number 10, Scotty Campbell, backup quarterback. And the guy to the right, to the left of, Mc of Millen, number 7, is Rod Dahauer. He calls the plays. But those two quarterbacks, they send in the signals and the signals, the only ones that know what they are, are the quarterbacks because Marion Campbell said, we let them design their own system because quarterbacks just naturally understand quarterbacks. So Dahauer doesn't even know what these guys are sending in. He hopes they're sending in what he tells them. <laughs> First down. Knocked down by Mike Wilcher. Right in the face of Chris Miller. Yeah, that's that blitz control again, and Wilcher's coming from that weak side. And Miller's reading it perfectly, but Wilcher is right in his path. The only thing to do to get away from that is just to turn around and throw it to the other side. Notice Wilcher's free. There's a read by both back, by the tight end, rather, and the quarterback, but Wilcher is right there. So it's second down and 10. Atlanta still at their own 22. 7-18 left to go in the game. And the Rams leading 31-21. Miller flipping it quickly to Michael Haynes. First down. Whoa. What an adjustment by Chris Miller at the last possible second. Quick hands, quick hands by Michael Haynes. Interesting note here. Michael Haynes, 81, and Sean Collins are both starting receivers for the Falcons, and they're both. There's the signals. Look at this. Choke. Yeah, there's a little wiggle waggle. But both of these guys played at Northern Arizona. Michael Haynes, the guy who just caught that pass, is a second-year guy, and of course the rookie, Sean Collins, is a first-year guy. Same team. Falcons at their own 34. First and 10. Draw to settle. Very little yardage. Kevin Green in there very quickly. 
to haul him down. In the San Francisco Indianapolis game, Eric Dickerson went over 10,000 career yards rushing. Seventh player in the history of the NFL to do that, and he did it faster than anyone else. Gain of one, second down and nine at the Atlanta 35. 5.53 left to play. Lots of time. Finally complete. Gene Lang in Rams territory. James Washington with the hit. Another first down for Atlanta. When we asked Chris Miller where have you improved the most? He said, Terry, the place I've improved the most is that I'm coming off my first guy and going to my second receiver now. I'm not just staying in there. He went right, left, and then back to the right and picked up Lane. Excellent job, once again, of Miller going to the third receiver and getting the completion. It's a gain of 18 for the Los Angeles 47. Five minutes, five seconds remaining in the game. Miller at the 50 yard line. Green's first sack last year when Houston Hoover was starting a tackle was over Houston Hoover. His first one this year was over Houston Hoover. And now once again, Green goes over Houston Hoover for his second sack today, third sack today. Fritz Schirmer. Looking on at his Rams defense. As the Rams try to hold, leading by 10 points. Four and a half minutes left in the game. Second and 13. Miller on the out pattern to Heller, incomplete. Oh. And Miller took a hit. See, the read that Miller has is the short. You always, as a quarterback, think short first. Because the short guys are give you the quickest reads because linebackers jump them quick. You see it, and then you go to the second guy. So you always start off reading short, then you go medium, then you go long. Miller came out. He should have read his linebacker who had the tight end Heller covered and gone down to Michael Haynes who had a 15-yard curl route. And I'm talking wide open. But he didn't. So it's third down and 13. The ball still at midfield. Four and a half minutes to play. Wilcher, no. Out of bounds. He did not have control before he went out of bounds. So it'll be an incompleted pass and bring up fourth and 13 for Atlanta. Saw this earlier. That's the deep sideline off of the rollout, but that pass is well covered short and certainly well covered deep. There's no way in the world that that Miller should have thrown that Clifford Hicks had to actually had the receiver covered by, covered by himself but Wiltshire underneath man two guys on one no way so Atlanta has to go for it fourth and 13 at the 50 yard line 422 left to play with the Rams leading 31 21 this should be a zone so all he's got to do is find the scene and a whistle on the snap I don't know whether the Falcons took too much time or what. We'll find out from Dale Hamer. Put two seconds back on the clock. The correct time is 4.22. 4.22. So the side judge who keeps the official time noticing that the clock wasn't right. So now it's been corrected. Kind of a tough time for that to happen for the Falcons. You got a fourth down and 13. You get all geared up for the play, and they stop you on the snap. Yeah, what would have been even worse is that had Miller been able to snap the ball off and take two steps, you would have had the release of all the receivers and been able to kind of, in your computer that you were given early in the week, said, oh, when they do this, this is what they have. So now they probably have to go in and change the play. Fourth 
fourth and 13 from midfield. Incomplete. It looked like it might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It was. It was intended for the tight end Ron Heller. And Kevin Green appeared to get a hand on it. So the Rams take over on downs at midfield. Well, I don't think it would have made any difference had Heller caught this pass because it was only an eight-yard sideline, and 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 he would have, you know, he had to run through the entire defense to make the first down. Let's just let's check it out. Miller looks to his left, sets up short, nice pocket there. Plenty of Duke's doing a fine job, and then there's a throw back. But as you notice, the tight end Heller was only downfield about six to eight yards, and had he caught it, he would have had to run through about six guys to, to pick up the first down. Sean Miller knocked it down the second time he's done that. And the Rams go back on offense. With Greg Bell already has over 100 yards. Daring for a big gain on first down. Evan Cooper, the strong safety, and Scott Cates make the tackle in the secondary. Coming up on four minutes remaining in the game. 31-21 Los Angeles. And the Rams, who started slowly and at times ineffectively, finally got it going, Terry. They had three what you would consider to be strong, successful drive. Right. They they got the big play on uh, on the Hail Mary at the half. They got then they had the they were the benefactors of, of penalties that, that and and when they had the third down that was incomplete, there was a penalty against the Falcons which gave the the Rams the first down. But second half they certainly have played much better. Second down and one. Bell getting the first down and spinning for more. As it gets inside the 40. Now, see, this is what Robinson wanted. This is what he was fearing that would not happen with Zampezi's offense, the fact that they would throw the ball so much that when it came time to kill the clock or win the game in the fourth quarter running it, they couldn't do that because their offensive linemen had become passers and not run blockers. But with the balance now that they had in 88, it's carrying over now. And with Bell, they're able to, a passing offense, to be able to move the ball, running the football to kill the clock. I think last year, what was their percentage of passing? 51% pass to 49% run, which is pretty good balance. About as balanced as you can get. First and 10 from the Atlanta 37. Bell again. Following Irv Pankey. For a gain of about five. Tony Casillas on the tackle. Well, next weekend, CBS Sports College football coverage will be at Boulder, Colorado, where the Fighting Illini of Illinois will take on the Buffaloes of Colorado, Colorado 2-0 already this year. That's next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, Saturday, right here on CBS Sports. Timeout Atlanta stopping the clock with 2.23 left to play in the game. And there's a quarterback, not to get off this game, but there's a quarterback in Illinois, a Jeff George kid that was the hot, hottest thing out of Indiana and, or, and, and went to Purdue, and he didn't out there when Akers came in he said hasta luego I said, Akers is from Texas they're going to run it and he transferred to Miami and said whoops they got Walsh down here he says bingo I'm going back I'm going to Illinois yeah that's where I'm going so he's up at Illinois and I saw him the other night man what a gun he's got and of course it's unfortunate that in Colorado they got that young quarterback that's fighting cancer yep. in August he, uh, he's, and been, he's been to practice he comes to the games and the, the guys are you know I mean he's just been a tremendous inspiration for to the team out there. And speaking of Purdue and quarterbacks, there are three Purdue quarterbacks in this game. I bet you I can name them. All right, let's have it. Well, Everett, of course. All right. Scotty Campbell. All right. How's that? One more to go. Oh, I thought that was three. <laughs> <laughs> How about Mark Herman? As, as exactly who I was going to say. <laughs> Perfect. Bell again. Short yardage this time. Stopped short of the 30 by Jesse Tuggle. And Ben Thomas. Once again, coming up next, Yvonne Lendl and Boris Becker, the top two seeds in the U.S. Open, squaring off for the men's championship. CBS Sports coverage of the last two weeks culminating with a great final matchup. And then later tonight on CBS, it'll be 60 Minutes, of course, then Murder, She Wrote. She Wrote and the CBS Sunday movie, Paradise, A Gathering of Guns. Special two-hour episode with Gene Barry, Hugh O'Brien, and John Schneider. So you can keep it right here for the rest of the day on CBS. Big Rams fan in Los Angeles, David and Suzanne Gertrudson, 11-week-old daughter. 
Joanna Joy, good friends of mine. They love this guy here, Everett. Joanna's birthday today, so I want to say happy birthday. That's the way they say it when they're that age, too. Birth? Birthday. Is that what I said, birth? Well, our, both our daughters <laughs> say that. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> ah. Isn't that what your precious little Rachel would say? Daddy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daddy. Daddy. From the 30. Third down and four. Bell, who's been doing it all, gets about three. He'll be about a yard short of the first down. Coming to the two-minute warning. And the Rams holding on to that football and a 10-point lead. Atlanta has used all of their timeouts. We'll be back for the final two minutes here in Atlanta with the Rams leading by 10. The Atlanta Falcons, who the last half of last season gave up an average of 12 points per game, have been hit for 31 here as we reach the final two minutes of the game. Yeah, but I, you know, don't read into that. What I mean, I know it's 31 points, but let's look at all the, you know, let's look at the Hail Mary, and let's look at penalties, let's look at a hot, humid day. Uh, let's, you know, let's look at all of these things. Let's look at an offense that couldn't go out and, and go 80 yards and eat up 10, you know, 10 minutes on the clock. So I, I certainly wouldn't look, look down on this Atlanta defense at all. Fourth down and a yard to go. And Everett Got takes and going to throw it. And he has it to Pete Holohan. Holohan with a first down and inside the 10. John Rady ran him down. So the Rams pull a Holohan. fast one here. Okay, Pat Carter comes in motion. Holohan is, is another tight end. Two tight ends line up on the set, same side with Holohan down. He just punched his guy and then came off. And the play action froze the linebackers. And, man, there's nobody out there. That's just a great call. A big play that not only keeps the ball in the Rams' hands, but eats up more of the clock and gives them a first and goal at the seventh. Uh, do you run it here or do you throw it? What do you do with a minute 15? No, I'd run it since it's first down. Okay. Clock running with a minute 10 at the play. Greg Bell trying to cut back. Gets a yard to the six in the grasp of Rick Bryan. Bell now with 126 yards on 26 carries. The coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles H. Milton III. Today's game produced by David Michaels. Today's game was directed by Andy Kendall. And the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. Clock running with 35 seconds left to play, and the Rams in no hurry to get back up to the line of scrimmage, leading by 10. And this should be the final play, as Atlanta has no timeouts remaining. Gaston Green cutting it back. It's inside the five. The ball stripped. No whistle. It's still loose. Atlanta picking it up. Another, Another lateral. Another lateral. And finally, the ball is covered at the 29. Four seconds left on the clock, and the Falcons got all of that they could. Right. See, in the last two minutes of a football game, in the fourth quarter, the only person that can recover a fumble is the guy that fumbled. And that time, it would have been the running back, Green. He fumbles. He's the only one that can pick this ball up and recover it. No one else can recover it. But the Falcons, of course, they did a good job of that. A la California, here we come. Look at this. There's another little lateral. There's one by Green. Let's pick it up. Let's have some more fun. Yeah, here, take it. I don't want to be going pass. <laughs> by these. That's offense. good stuff there. That's will be declined. Thing. The ball will be put in play at the spot of the fumble. The spot of the fumble. So it cannot be advanced in spite of all the efforts of the Atlanta Falcons. The ball at the 18, they will have it. But only four seconds remain, and they are down by 10. So JR and company, figuring that they've got a shot at the Super Bowl, you've got to win the first one before you can win them all, and they will win the game today. Well, nothing like winning that first game. I played in a bunch of first games when we were defending champions or whatever, and there's, it's, you're so nervous, and you need to win that first game. It just does world of good for your confidence. And looks like today the Rams are going to get that first victory, and it, it certainly means a lot. 
That fumble by Gaston Green, incidentally, the first turnover in this go in this game today. Well, he had fumbleitis in preseason, and that's one of the reasons a lot of people felt like that. Even though uh, Bell had held out, Bell does not fumble, and Green does, and and so consequently, uh, Green doesn't start. Green gets a chance and fumbles again. What should be, barring a penalty on the defense, the final play of the game. Miller throws it quickly to Sean Collins, and the Rams are playing 20 yards off the ball. It's a big game, but that's about all as time runs out. Marion Campbell and company losing their opener, and John Robinson and the Los Angeles Rams defeat the Falcons 31 to 21. Rams again showing the balance, Terry, that may be what takes him back to the playoffs. 